This is AIM Agenda with me now from Melbourne, Liberal MP Michael Sukar and in Perth, Labor's Tim Hammond. Gentlemen, good morning to you both, Michael. Uh, first, you, I want to ask you for your reaction. Um, we'll start with Tony Abbott. His criticism of the decision to scrap the Green Army he said it's, uh, uh, that, that it's a bad principle to axe your own policy for the Greens' policy because it means that their priorities are more important than ours. That would hardly be a smart move for a centre-right government. That was Mr Abbott's uh, critique yesterday of this decision that is going to uh, be confirmed in the mid-year budget update, Michael. Well, morning, Kieran. Good to be with you. Uh, look, Kieran, budget repair is not easy. Uh, when you're trying to gulf a huge gap uh, and repay debt that we inherited from the Labor Party, uh, trying to do it on the spending side particularly is not easy. And the Green Army, a good program though it is, uh, I think it is, uh, it's sensible that we review every aspect of government spending and um, putting additional money into land care. I think we all accept land care is a good project. We all accept that the Green Army was a good project. But uh, budget repair is not easy and this represents savings of $350 million over the forward estimates. And I think uh, it's unfortunately a position that uh, Labor has put us in. Uh, but we will have to find savings wherever we can find them and uh, that may even include some of our own programs from time to time and this is one of them. In my electorate I've had a number of Green Army projects and uh, they are project based so the Green Army runs for six months and I've had a number of them in my electorate and we're getting to the point now where I think we've achieved a lot. I'm not saying that there's no use necessarily for programs like the Green Army but We've achieved a lot in a short time and uh, again, budget repair is not easy. So I think we have to make these tough decisions if we are going to ensure we can meet the, the bigger objective and that is ensuring we don't pass on debt to the next generation. Yeah. Tim Hammond, your uh, reflections on that given this is, uh, well Michael's uh, point is very similar to what we've heard from, um, from the leadership of the, the coalition, not so Mr Abbott, the former Prime Minister, he's, um, he's dismayed by reports the Green Army is going to, going to go, but uh, Michael and, and uh, the leadership of the, of the coalition on, on one page when it comes to the need to, to continue to rein in the, the spending, and that's certainly the view of Standard & Poor's, the ratings agency, Tim. Yeah, good morning, Kieran, and good morning to Michael. Well, it's interesting that you, you put this in the basis of the, the leadership's position. The question I ask is which leadership? It's another example about how hopelessly divided this government is and, and who is actually marching to the beat of whose drum. On the one hand you've got Tony Abbott and not just Tony Abbott uh, but many others supporting his position in relation to maintaining the Green Army and on the other hand what we appear to be hearing from Michael this morning is a confirmation indeed uh, that the Green Army project is going to be axed. So, what it really goes to is the heart of the division of this government as opposed to a, a particular way forward in relation to jobs in the economy, which I'll come to later on. But, Kieran, there gets to a point in time where you can only kick a can of blaming previous governments so far down the street. Uh, this government likes to try and crow at any opportunity that they won the election, not, not that they're acting like it. Um, they need to take responsibility for the decisions within, the, within their own party. All we see here again, is Malcolm Turnbull being hopelessly captured by the Conservative right? Michael, in terms of the uh, Conservative right, well, we've heard from one a very vocal member of that uh, particular cohort, Senator Bernardi, overnight. He's critical of the review into climate policy, particularly the prospect of a, an emissions intensity scheme for the power industry. Um, has what do you make of this, given we've not really even seen a change of policy yet? This is just the, the terms of reference for a review into your policy. Precisely, Kieran. And, and as a member of the very scary and nasty Conservative right that Tim sort of alludes to, uh, this is just a review. I mean, we should review policies. We should ensure that the objectives that have been laid down are on track to be met. We've obviously got emissions reduction targets of between 28 and 30 percent that we agreed to in Paris. We've got the emissions reduction fund, the direct action plan. It's very sensible that these things be reviewed. I think the terms of reference, uh, I'm not particularly concerned about the terms of reference. I mean, we at the moment, are through the emissions reduction fund, are achieving carbon abatement of about $12 per tonne. 
uh, from uh, all the advice I have, we're absolutely on track to meet our uh, international obligations as far as, as, as far as emissions reductions go. And I'd expect that this review confirms that the settings that we have are, uh, are achieving the objectives that we have laid down. So uh, I'm not um, particularly concerned. Uh, I think a review is sensible in the circumstances. Um, my view, though, is that the most pressing threat, the most pressing issue that uh, I think our Energy and Environment Minister needs to be focusing on uh, is uh, the, the supply of electricity, the cost of electricity, the security of our electricity grid. Uh, that is, in my view, the existential threat to manufacturing, heavy industry, and I know he's turning his mind to that. So. Uh, there's a mm. range of uh, a range of aspects of the review uh, that I think we're sensibly looking into, and um, I'm not particularly concerned about them in the way that has been described by others. 